there, welcome along to another Evolve Vlog video with me, Jennifer Kirk, and today I'm going to show you how to pull the codes on a Volvo 850. Now, um, the earlier ones, they're dead easy. They've got a diagnostic unit under the bonnet and you just plug a fly lead in. It couldn't be simpler and you can read all sorts of things, ABS, uh, cruise control, even I think the climate control modules can all be read from under the bonnet. However, things changed in around 95, 96, and uh, in line with legislation in America, which was aimed at uh, emissions controls, being able to get on top of problems with cars and diagnosing them faster, um, everything had to go OBD2 compliant. And because of that, Volvo just started to design in the OBD2 compliant, but there was this kind of bridging period where some things had gone OBD2 compliant, some things hadn't. And in 1996, the Volvo 850 was what I've seen referred to as OBD 1.5. Now this means that you need a scan tool to read, for example, ABS faults, and that can be fairly readily done as my local garage has found, and it can diagnose the ABS faults. What it can't do, unless you've got a very particular scan tool, which is no longer made as far as I know, and even Volvo dealerships may not actually have the right equipment anymore because it's been so long and the 850s are becoming few and far between on the road. Uh, the ECU. Now, if this generates a fault code, you'll get your uh, check engine light. It's also referred to as a lambda light. I've seen it referred to as that on the dashboard because it has like the Greek letter lambda, which is sort of like an upside down Y. Uh, and that would be in green and a yellow background from memory. And that is exactly what this car has got. And I've actually made a code reader for this. It's a flash code reader. It may work with other makes and models of cars from the same period if you've got a similar problem from around that sort of 95 through to 97 period. Um, and they're quite easy to make using relatively cheap components, a little bit of soldering. Now my soldering is not the best, but I'm going to be showing you that in a moment. I'm going to read the code, show you how to read the code, how to uh, cycle all the way through to get it to a point where you can then clear the codes and then how to clear them. And hopefully if it's a, a minor or a historic fault code, you can clear that out and it won't come back. But if the code then does come back, it means that you've got a genuine problem. And those flash codes, you can look them up either on the internet or also in the back of the Haynes manual for uh, certainly for this car and probably for any other car in which they're relevant it uh, gives you a clue what those flash codes mean now some of these can be fairly vague and the one that this car has got um, is a 231 code and uh, it's long-term fuel uh, trim too rich or too lean so it doesn't really give you any clues whatsoever um, but usually they're caused by a vacuum leak which can be the devil's armpit to track down but I've managed to track that down so I'm going to go and fix that and then now I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to hopefully clear that code so fingers crossed so what we can see down here, I'm going to turn the ignition to the on position. I'm not going to go any further because I want the engine to be cold when I'm doing this work. And you can see uh, there, that one at the bottom, that's the check engine light. Um, effectively, it's the fault code lamp. Uh, it can come on, I think, with things like cruise control or climate control if you've got those two as uh, optional extras. This vehicle doesn't have it, so that is purely a check engine light. And by now, it should have gone off, and it hasn't, and that's because the fault code is stored in there. So I'm going to crack on and see if I can fix what I suspect is a vacuum leak causing that. Okay, I've done the repairs. Uh, it came on to rain, as you can see, uh, so I didn't film any of it. It was quite simple. What I'd noted the other day was that uh, I had uh, some kind of vacuum leak around the O-rings on the uh, fuel injectors. Uh, found that with some carburetor cleaner, actually, just sprayed it around, and where it sucked it in, the engine note changed. It's the usual trick. So I've just replaced all of those, and... Uh, the system won't automatically reset itself with a uh, code 231 uh, because of the way it stores the code. So you can see there the lambda light or the check engine light still on. If you had something like a camshaft position sensor go out and change that, uh, the system picks that up in the self-test and immediately knows that the camshaft position sensor is good and the light will go out automatically. Uh, I think the code is still stored, but it's not an active code. Now with this, I could drive it about 35 miles, and if it then 
uh, goes through, I think it's three cycles without triggering the code, then it will go out. But uh, 35 miles is quite a bit of a check. So what I'm going to do is show you how to manually reset it. And you can see down here, the coin holder says OBD2 on the top. And that, if you just pull it out, is where the connector actually is. And uh, my mess of wires in here, and take this out because my solder joints aren't so great. So I'm going to have to uh, hold some of these wires together. You can make it an awful lot neater. But I'm just going to stop recording for a moment so I can get this set up and I'll show you how you plug this in. What I've actually done is I've uh, shortened some of these, uh, fixed some solder joints, but um, I'm not going to go into the construction of this too much because you can find a lot of good information online showing you how to build one of these, but just make sure when you do build it you get the LED the right way round. That side is a little flat uh, notch in, you've got to make sure you get that to the correct side to get the polarity correct. So what you can see we've got here is uh, into the OBD socket, the tail that's on its own that has no extra wire attached to it, that goes into pin 16. Uh, I've used the uh, broken up bits of a paper clip, seem perfect, so you can stick it in there and you don't have to hold it. The uh, pin that's got two wires soldered to it, that goes into pin three on the top row there. And then that leaves you this wire, which is referred to online as the dipper. And this, we're going to dip into number five. So this is a bit tricky to set up to show you, because I've got to now watch this on the screen. But we go into five, one, two, and this is where we should get one, two, one, two, three, one. So we've got two, three, one. Uh, it's a three number code that it will spit out to you. Uh, and as you can see there, you get uh, one set of flashes, then another set of flashes after a pause, there's another pause, and then the final set of flashes. Now you can't just erase the codes then and there, so what you've got to do is see if there's any more. So we do the same trick again, one, two, and if we get the same code, so one, two, One, two, three, one. Yeah, that's the same code, and that means that's the only code that's stored. Now that we've cycled through every code, it will let us uh, erase them. So, if we go back to pin five, and then this time we put it in for seven seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it illuminates all the time that it's in. And what we should now get is one long flash. There. That means that the ECU is ready to have the codes deleted. So go back into number five for another seven seconds. One, two, three. If you get it wrong, then what tends to happen is you'll either get rapid flashing light, which means that you've confused the ECU and you'll have to go again. There we are. And that's where we've confused the system. If you get a bad connection at any point, then you get a problem where the light will flash and uh, it won't clear the code properly. Or there, it thinks that I've asked to see the codes again. So if you get that, don't worry. Just go back in. one two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there, as you can see, the light's now gone out and is staying out. So it's a pretty simple and useful tool and it'll get you out of a lot of bother by being able to read random engine codes. That 231 has been a real nuisance to me until I spotted the little bit of bubbling around the injector seals. And sometimes it can be something as simple as that, but it'll also give up a whole host of other codes. Within the Haynes manual for your car, you'll find uh, quite an extensive list. I think it's pretty much every single one. So you can see there 
They range from uh, 111, which is no fault detected. If the light isn't on and you do the checks, it should just give you a 111. It means no fault detected, no fault code stored. And then you can see there, they range from that 111 all the way to 541. And of course, some of these aren't really going to be applicable to your vehicle. Uh, some of these actually, uh, the engine just won't run if um, you've got uh, issues uh, as serious as some of these. So things like no signal from uh, fuel injectors, it's not really going to run, is it? But we can see there in the list, 231, long-term fuel mixture, too weak or too rich in part load stage. It doesn't really give you a lot of clues, does it? Too weak or too rich? Well, give me a clue. Which one is it? But uh, usually those uh, are traced back to a vacuum leak. Well, I hope that has been informative to you. It's certainly a little trick which has saved me a lot of money and kept the old uh, girl, the beast, on the road for a good deal longer. Uh, without that trick, I just wouldn't have been able to have diagnosed some of the faults. Uh, but until next time, you take very good care of yourself. And uh, don't forget to tune back into the channel where there's plenty of other videos. And also, hopefully there'll be some more Volvlog videos in the future. But until then, you take very good care of yourself. This is me, Jenny Kirk, saying until next time, bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And a special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Mark McShane and Bob310. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.